On this video, I am going to show you the 10 types of content marketing that will stop your customer scrolling. And just before we dive into it, if you want the best social media marketing, how to's, tutorials, tips, tricks, and all that good stuff, make sure you subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below and make sure you also hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I put out a video every Wednesday. Okay, so you've created your content calendar, but now you wanna try different types of content to keep your customer interested. And let's be honest, you're the one probably creating it, so you wanna keep yourself interested in the process. Not only am I going to walk you through the 10 types of content marketing that will stop your customer scrolling, but I am going to show you how to creatively present this content because number one, your competitors aren't doing it this way. And secondly, the creative element is the bit that will stop the customer scrolling. It's the bit that captures attention. And that's the key that we're going for, right? Now, really, when we dive into content marketing, there's really only four ways that we can present an idea. So there's written, there's audio, there's visual, and there's video. With that in mind, let's look at that first content marketing type. Now, the first type of content marketing I wanna talk about is something that we're all very familiar with. It's a blog post or an article. So typically with anything that is written, the way to make it stand out is to focus on the headline because really that is all you have to draw your customer in initially. Not only that, we have to think about the thumbnail that we're going to create alongside the blog post because if we're posting on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere like that, LinkedIn, the first thing that people are going to see is whether or not it has a thumbnail and what that thumbnail looks like. Even people like myself who love watching video, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, I spend a lot of time watching Instagram stories, I am drawn to reading a blog post when the thumbnail and the heading is compelling. So irrespective of the content within that blog post or article, you need to make sure that the headline real estate, the thumbnail real estate is absolutely 100% a plus your best work. The second type of content marketing I wanna talk about is lists. And the reason why I put this straight after the blog post is because typically we use blog posts to create lists. But something that I like to do to mix it up is to create lists of some sort within my Instagram captions or put the list in the visual itself. Even Facebook now has a tool where when you go to post a status, you can actually just create a list and they put a visual element to it. So lists are a really great way to capture people's attention and stop them scrolling because it's a lot of information in a very concise way. And that's very appealing to our fast food type nature. We want things immediately. We don't want to waste time on them. And we want to know that when we come out the other side, it's been a valuable use of our time. And so that's why I love lists, whether they're embedded in a blog post itself or whether they're used as a standalone feature, which I'm encouraging, hence the fact that it's its own um, content marketing type in my list. Uh, they're a really great way to get that attention that we're after and to hold that attention that we're after. Lists are also very shareable as well. So if you can create some kind of concise image or post caption that creates a list, you will find that it's something that people will save and share and comment on, particularly if you've got a call to action at the end. My third type of content marketing for you is a brand video. There's something about being able to put music to something and create an emotion in your viewer that is compelling and will cause them to stop. If you've presented yourself, your team, your brand, your business in a creative way, visually, it causes people to stop and take notice, especially with that audio element to it. Um, it's a really great way to stop people scrolling and to get them in and to buy in and to, um, and to talk about your message in a way that's entertaining um, and also has an element of emotional buy-in. So when I use the word buy-in, I just mean that um, they begin to trust you more and it's something that they can emotionally invest in. 
So the fourth type of content marketing I want to talk about is something that I'm very familiar with and that is a how to. Now irrespective of how you wish to present that information, whether it be a blog post, a podcast, a video, even an infographic, uh, it's a really good way to capture attention. People want to learn how to do things in their own strength. They want to know how to do something for themselves and they don't want to ask. So for you to create something that they can go and replicate, that's very tangible, that's very actionable, has a really appealing element to it. And again, whether you do it via written, video or audio, the visual element really comes into this. You need a stunning thumbnail. You need a really good headline. It's not hard to create a really good headline for a how-to because typically you're really touching on a pain point. So. Uh, I encourage you to use the use of visuals when you do your how-tos. Another little hack that I'll add in here that really helps people to stop scrolling is when you use a different medium to convey the piece of content that you've created. So what I mean by that, it's quite difficult to explain, so I'm gonna give you an example. I've created this video for you, right? But I can extract the audio and overlay that over a plain image and have that as an audio piece with that visual element. So because it's not a standard video, because it's not just a written piece, I can put that out and that's actually quite disruptive to the feed because there's not a ton of people doing that. I am seeing it more and more. So if you're watching this after February, 2019 and maybe 12 months or something, this might not be an effective way to stop people scrolling. But right now it is, especially, especially if you put captions over the top because more than 85% of people listen to video with the sound off. Um, so even if you're creating an audio snippet and putting it over um, a visual element, you're still going to need that caption element um, for them to be able to listen. So if you do that, I guarantee that you will stop people in their tracks um, and if you make it bite-sized and actionable, again, a really great way to stop that scrolling. Right, so we're up to the fifth type of content marketing and that is similar to the how-tos, but it's tutorials. Now, tutorials tend to be a lot uh, longer. They tend to be far more in depth. They tend to have technical elements to them. And so typically they are uh, done via video. Now there are some really, really, really great tutorial blog posts out there as well. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily expect to see a tutorial done via podcast. It's just too much of a process for people to wrap their heads around it without seeing a visual element attached to it. Correct me if I'm wrong, feel free to send me podcasts where somebody has done a full blown 60 minute tutorial. I'm not here to try and be right about it, um, but I am here to say that it's another thing that people love because we're all wanting knowledge. We're all wanting that information and people wanna know how to do something at a level of expertise all by themselves. And so that's a really great way to capture attention and stop people scrolling. And the reason it stops people scrolling is because they go, hang on, this person actually knows how to do X, Y, and Z. And that's actually a complicated process. And you're beginning to position yourselves as the authority in their mind. And therefore that psychological element in and of itself is going to stop people thumbing through and seeing you as just anybody else who's posting just pictures or just statuses or just this or just that. You're now actually establishing yourself and taking root in their mind as that authority that they can come back to. So whether they click through, whether they save it for later, whether they comment on it, um, whatever the action is, it does stop people scrolling. A sixth type of content marketing for you is images. And this one is used and abused. And so this is why it's really, really important to uh, think about how you're going to use images. So I find in my business running social media for multiple brands that there's always this tension in me of stock footage versus uh, personal footage, so to speak. If I can, I will always use a picture of the person, the brand, the people behind the brand before I ever use stock footage. We have been inundated for too long now with stock footage. It's just 
not even something we really register with. I've seen some very clever uses of it uh, where stock footage has been taken with a very snappy, sarcastic caption attached to it. And I love that use, it's very interesting. I've also seen people use it to keep color themes in their Instagram stories. I think that's a good use of it as well. But typically speaking, if you wanna use images, if you can just use your iPhone and get some around the office, the people, the customers, the team, that's going to be your best bet to stop people scrolling. The other thing that I have found, corporate or personal brand, it does not matter. If you have the person who is the, the biggest face of the brand, so that might be the CEO, that might be somebody that's on camera a lot. If you can get that person to have photos and you can put captions to that and long form copy to that and personal posts to that, that far outweighs just about any other type of content, at least on Facebook, I can promise you that. Not only that, on Instagram, you'll get a far better reception by putting a photo up that has your face in it or somebody in your team's face versus um, just like a standard, desk flat lay or something like that. I can promise you if you put people in your photos, you will get a better response every single time. It is the thing about images that will stop people scrolling. My seventh type of content marketing for you is infographics. Oh my goodness, these things get shared out the wazoo. And there are so many ways to create them, whether you pay someone to do it, whether you do it yourself in something like Canva that has templates, these things are insane. Infographics are an easy way for people to digest a lot of information in a visual way. And because we're visual creatures, we actually take in more of the information than by sitting there and reading a whole page of the written word. So I can't encourage you enough to try infographics, even to take one simple idea and condense it down into something that can be represented as a picture, a pie graph, a bar graph, you are going to stop people in their tracks because all of a sudden you've presented something factual as something super interesting to look at. I've seen a lot of infographics that are very word heavy and they just confuse the mind. And I would actually rather read a report or a piece of writing next to it than sit there and try and read all these tiny bits of writing on something that's meant to be visual. So keep it visual and you will stop people in their tracks. So my eighth type of content marketing for you is probably a little bit more for my B2B people here, but it is white papers. Now typically a white paper is a way to present a, a professional document that gives information about a certain product um, to the other business. Typically that's what it is. So you know it has the potential to be incredibly boring and that's where a little bit of graphic design, a little bit of a nice front cover to pizzazz it uh, would be a really good idea and it doesn't take much to do that. To make it visually compelling is a really important part of something that is potentially um, long, possibly an arduous read. Um, and also, just side note to that, some of the best white papers I've seen have amazing infographics throughout. That's a really good thing to do if you're presenting a lot of complex ideas in the one place, uh, in the one paper. My ninth piece of content marketing for you is slide decks. Now this is really good if you're a speaker or if you intend to speak anywhere to actually turn um, what you've used to present on stage into a slide deck and put it on something like LinkedIn. It's a really great way for people to take your message and your information on board. Again, it's just a visual thing with slide decks visual and headline. If you can create a really compelling headline and a killer, killer front page. I mean, you want a killer slide deck. You want the whole thing to look schmick, but if you can get that front page and you can get that headline done, it's the thing that's gonna stop people scrolling. I typically don't look at a lot of slide decks. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, but I will say this, any slide deck that I have viewed, and I've viewed a handful, I have only gone to them because the visual element was super compelling. Good graphic design goes a long way for something that isn't inherently entertaining or sexy. My 10th type of content marketing for you is an opinion piece. 
These are really, really good when you want to engage people because people want to love and hate things. They tend to be black and white. They tend to go for one thing or the other. And so for you to give an opinion on something can be really helpful, not only to um, really know who your audience is, but also to create engagement, especially if you have a very strong opinion on something. But again, whether you do this via audio, via video, via um, a written blog post, you really need to make sure that the visuals are on point for it. If you do it as an audio, make sure you capture as a snippet to put out one of the most controversial parts of what you say, because that's what's going to stop people in their tracks. They don't care about your intro. They don't care about, you know, a little thought you have here and there. They really want to hear you get to the heart of the matter. They want to hear you start to rant. They want to hear you work up to your main point. So make sure when you're pulling out those snippets or quotes or whatever it is that you're doing, you're pulling out those bits that are emotionally compelling for people that pull them in through their emotion. And again, headline is gonna be super important for an opinion piece uh, because it's the thing that's gonna draw people in as well. If you're being very opinionated about something, it's not too hard to create a very interesting headline that's clickable. And I know that I've used compelling like 60 bazillion times in this video, but that's what it's about. I mean, if you want to capture attention, you need to be compelling. So all of these ideas, you need to be thinking about headline. You need to be thinking about the visual element. You need to be thinking about how can I repurpose this written thing into something that's maybe video or maybe something that's audio. Maybe I could read part of my blog post and turn that into an audio snippet and then overlay that over a photo of myself and therefore I'm going to be able to stop people scrolling in their tracks. Now to make your life easier with all of this, I've got a content calendar template pack uh, that I've created for you. It does have a list of content ideas in it. It's not exactly the same as the one that I talked about today, but it's also got a blank content calendar. It's got a content calendar already populated, and it's also got the breakdown, the visual diagram of how I go from content strategy um, through to filling out my calendar. So make sure you click on the link below and download that pack. And next week, I'm going to be talking to you about how to create content and giving you a bunch of content creation hacks and strategy. So that's it for me this week. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful for you. I would love to hear from you and don't forget to download that content template pack and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.